Hello and welcome to another review. This time we are looking at a model of Glacier Express by Bemo. I have the locomotive and five cars. First class, second class, bar car and two more second class cars. And um, this is slightly controversial set because it's actually fab uh, factory set to operate on standard HO gauge tracks. So before we go any further, let's talk about this uh, a little bit. So before we jump into the actual review, let's talk about the gauge and the scale and the narrow gauge versus standard gauge for HO. I'm sure there is a lot of you who are watching my channel who are very well uh, educated on that subject, but I'm sure there are people who would like to know a little bit more about it, especially since this train is a model of one of the most popular tourist trains in the world. And I'm sure there is a lot of people who just simply would like to have this model. So this train in real world is operating on the network of narrow gauge uh, tracks, which is classified in HO scale as HOM, uh, which is 12 millimeters gauge in HO scale. Standard gauge for HO is 16.5 millimeters, and HOM, which is the most prototypically correct or closest to uh, what this train should operate on is called HOM, which is the 12 millimeters gauge. Now, the problem with this is if you want to have this kind of train in your collection, unless you have extension to your layout with HOM tracks or you want to build specific layout, you can't operate uh, this train. So, some time ago, Bemo made a very clever decision. They decided to make some of the most popular sets with wheel sets uh, gauge to operate on standard HO tracks. And this is exactly uh, this set. Uh, so all of them factory equipped with wheels that are gauged to 16.5 um, millimeters standard HO tracks. And just to make sure that there is no confusion around the sizes and gauges and, and, and the scale, these are exactly the same models that uh, BEMO is offering for prototypical operation on HOM track gauge. That's exactly the same set. The only difference is the wheels are set up to operate on a wider tracks to accommodate the 16.5 HO scale. I will go straight to the point with my opinion on this set. And then if you guys are interested, keep on watching if you want to find a little bit more and justification for my opinion. From my perspective, after several days of looking at these models, I'm really deeply disappointed. This is probably one of the worst uh, purchase for a very long time uh, because the BEMO products were always priced um, as a premium product. Each of these cars is priced at around 90 euro a piece and the locomotive is about uh, 270 uh, euros and in dollars nowadays is pretty much one to one. The locomotive seems to be okay and we're going to talk about it a little bit later. Um, I have some concerns about the drive but the cars are pretty much to my standards well overpriced toys. And here's the entire consist. First class bar car. By the way, I love the paint scheme on the train. The interlocking Swiss cross between the cars is absolutely fantastic. And the last three pieces are the second class cars, three second class cars. That's the last car, and I will explain later on the gap between the last two cars. That's the that's the distance if you use uh, standard HO couplers on these cars. But anyway, from a paint scheme standpoint of view, fantastic looking train. And this is just um, eye height view to show you guys um, this train with some uh, standard gauge HO uh, cars in the background. Okay, let's start with the locomotive then. Uh, very nice looking piece of contemporary um, 
industrial design, which personally I like very much and is of course personal preference. Um, and uh, great combination with, uh, with that chrome slash red paint scheme. Very nice uh, paint quality. One end is solid red. And the other side is all plated. Let me see if we can turn around. The paint scheme is done very, very well. And here's the rooftop. Nicely detailed. I don't know if you notice, but there's a small indentation I assume that's from the mold and here's another one and here's the opposite side again same story take a look at this indentation here and here And the elements of suspensions and uh, and the boogies, you can barely see them because of that low skirt and how low is that locomotive sitting above the tracks. Good details, industry standard, mostly just raw plastic. Let's see if I can show this a bit better. Here's the bottom, the drive. It's a combination of metal and plastic gears. Pick up from all four axles. As you can see, there is no close coupling mechanism. Uh, these are just standard NEM sockets and I installed the Fleischmann couplers for my operation, we'll talk about it later on. Alright, let's take a look inside. The shell is installed with four screws or attached with four screws, so that's the old style, old school. Uh, there's no snap-on, no uh, locks to release. It's just simply take the four screws and uh, the whole shell is sliding off just standard 8 pin decoder interface I'm using for testing just regular 20 bucks Digitrax decoder just um, for the motor control um, centrally located motor according to manual it's a 5 pole motor not cordless and then the rest of the drive is just industry standard 2 shafts, 1 flywheel and distributed to both ends Here's the engineer cabin. Plenty of space to install full size decoder and a speaker. There's absolutely no problem of um, closing the shell. It's actually surprisingly generous with space, so you can install quite large speaker. Now, in terms of operation, I'm not going to demonstrate this because this is not the decoder I want to actually uh, use for this locomotive. I would like to have a SU V5. But for some reason, at least during the tests with this decoder, the drive is actually quite jerky. It's not as smooth as I expected. 
Interestingly enough, I have another much older BEMO model which operates very similar way. Years later, brand new model and it seems to be behaving the same way, um, especially on at low speed. It's not as smooth as I would expect. Okay, let's talk about the cars now. And um, that's where the fun begins. <laughs> so where do I start? Um, first of all, they are priced at around 85 or 95 euros a piece. And um, I really don't understand and have hard time to comprehend what costs 90 euros in uh, one of these cars. I, I assume it must be the licensing for um, having the Glacier Express logo because other than that, these cars are actually quite flimsy. And there's a whole number of quality issues with it. In general, they look very nice, but um, just like in case of many other models, when you have fantastic paint scheme and graphics like this one, you don't see it until you start looking closely at some of the details and um, and uh, flaws. So uh, one of the things that I noticed first of all when I was unpacking these models, I don't know if you can see it if the camera is picking this up, but even though that two red colors on between these two cars seems to be the same, but the finishing on the rest of the bar car is completely different, and you can feel it in, uh, when you touch it, is matte. And this is flat so this is much rougher finishing there's something wrong with either over sprayed coating or different paint was used this car definitely has a different finishing and therefore kind of a little bit different hue and you can see it from a distance and distance and the angle that this is not the same and i'm looking at this from a context of or perspective of 90 euros per car so my expectations are to have a premium quality product and is not three of the cars arrived with the transition pieces bowed or bulged on one side just like this one my biggest problem with these models do you see the center part of the car how this wall is bulging out maybe i can show with the camera a little bit better and then close up uh, let the focus pick it up. Yeah. You can see how that wall there's a gap and you can't close it because the shell is bulging away from the floor, from the frame. And three of the five cars have the same issue. They're just simply misshaped. And when I measure between the edge and the center, some of the cars, there's a two millimeters difference in the width between um, the center part and the edge. So that's a big no-no. And actually, you can close it, you can, yeah. You can see how they spring right back. Right in the middle section of the roof, somewhere here on every single car, um, there's a little dimple and you can see it's clearly visible on every single car. And for scale, this one is on the restaurant car, on the bar car is really bad. I think the wheel sets are set wrong. They need to be re-gauged because these cars just simply won't roll. And that's after already a few minutes of running on the layup. And then is the coupling between the cars. So this is how these cars are coupled uh, together using the couplers provided with the models. There's so much space I can stuck my finger in between the cars. I think my Christmas set that I purchased from local Aldi has a closer coupling than uh, these cars. And this is the coupling when I install the standard Fleischmann couplers, like this one. Verse was coming with With the cars. Now, I have to research the couplers for narrow gauge um, models uh, because something is not quite right here. So, 
the sockets are not articulated there is no close coupling mechanism and theoretically you don't need it because these cars don't have a buffers so this is like very similar to like American style uh, couplers where the passenger cars don't have close coupling mechanism but typically the sockets for the couplers are articulated to accommodate on the curves for the cars to, um, to go in the curves and when I tested what I noticed on my layout I can use the Fleischmann couplers as long as I'm using it on the main line on about 12 1300 millimeters radius and like one meter and so on the moment I go to like six seven hundred millimeters radius these cars are starting to uh, start jumping and uh, just simply pushing out because the transition points are just simply locking most likely and again I will have to re-gauge the wheels and do the whole setup I'm sure there is a way of finding a solution for this and I will have to research the narrow gauge coupling options as well. But still, once again, 90 euros per piece. Right, so now going back to some of the attributes. Interior. Very nice graphics. Alright, so let's take a look inside uh, one of the cars starting with the boogies and the electrical pickups. So the boogies are attached with the screw, it's not snap on. Then you have the side frames which are not really anything special. Very simple injection molded piece, nothing really highly detailed. And uh, they are just pressed on to these two pieces. You can see there are pickups already pre installed on the frames, but they are not set to the wheels. So don't be surprised if you install the light and the light will not operate because you need to set them up. As you can see, they are not touching the wheels at all, they are just flat to the frame. And I think that's been done purposely because the wheel sets are snap in and these are split axle wheel sets so you can gauge to either 16.5 full HO and I assume you can squeeze them to 12 millimeters and they're going to be operating on HOM as well which is actually clever and uh, here's the flip side and you just simply snap the wheels right in here and that's what I mentioned about the um, about the coupler socket it's not articulated here it looks like it was meant to be but for some reason it's not so I'm not sure if there is a conversion that can be done anyway I have not um, I have not investigated the entire coupling options for a narrow gauge one more thing I forgot to mention um, are the sliders and the connections for the electrical pickups. You can see the knobs here and they are correlated with the sliders at the base of the cars so you don't have to wire anything between the frames or the boogies to the car. I've seen this on Cato, I believe in a couple of other models as well. And here's the the entire chassis, right? So the base plate Very simple, basic interior, nothing very really special nowadays. And the shell, of course. And actually, I don't know if the camera will show, yeah, but you can see clearly it's bulging here on this side. There's eight locks at the base that were supposed to engage here with this spot here in the, on the shell but because that whole center part on both sides is bulging out it's pretty much not holding so the entire floor and, um, and the interior is kind of flexing so pretty much everything is uh, sitting on these two and these two locks here they're super light so as you can see there's no not even one piece of metal pretty much anywhere I mean in terms of a ballast or, or weight Let's take apart the Barker. Let's see what is inside.
So the bar car seems to have the same problem with bulging in a centerpiece and you can see how the shell is playing here. It's not snug to the floor. It's not as bad as the previous car. And here it is in the full glory. shell again I don't know if you can see it but um, there's an angle yeah you can right now here that side is boiling out that's unfortunate so once again in conclusion locomotive okay considering that that drive can be fixed and is going to perform better with better decoder uh, but the cars are a huge disappointment and uh, if this is this is an example of quality control at BEMO for uh, like I mentioned multiple times 90 euros per piece that's really disappointing happy model railroading